We are back between two Yetis with a titan of the industry, Eric. Oh, so start again. <laughs> wow. All right. And we are back between two Yetis with the titan of the industry, Harris. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Owner of Midnight Express? Owner of Midnight Express, along with my brother, Eric. Because your father, right, started this company. Is that right? Uh, we didn't start it. We acquired the company about 12 years ago. Okay. And what do you guys do? Just give us a quick rundown of these amazing looking boats. Yeah, we build high performance center consoles built here in Miami. Uh, we build about 40 boats a year, mm -hmm. uh, fully customized. And yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what we do. I mean, they do, they are fully customized. I mean, there's nothing spared to expense, is there? I mean, no. from engine painting to match the boat and... Exactly, we're matching car paints, uh, amount of engines, uh, fully customizable. No two boats come out the same. What, when you say matching car paint, do people come along and say, "This is my Lamborghini. I want That's it." That's exactly same. right. This is my Lamborghini. This is my Porsche. This is my Ferrari. I want. I want it that same color. What's the most ostentatious color you've ever painted a boat? Gold. Gold, which is the one right behind us. Gold. Yes. Okay. And was someone car painted that? Or no, 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 no. That was. Uh, it was just a custom, custom gold. That's what they wanted. Jeez. I mean, what's the. The defining feature of your boats, apart from the quality and the customization, you obviously build boats to go fast, right? Yeah, it's performance, right? Our boats, our boats on the low end will do 70 miles an hour, and on the high end will do uh, on 95, the low end? 100. Yeah, the low end. Well, they can go, they can go slower than that, but yeah, but you know, you, the slowest top speed is 70, is miles, 70 miles an hour. That's fantastic. And tell us a little bit about your hull. I've known you for many years. Yes. And you've got a beautiful sloping hull at the back, but there's a story to that, right? Yeah. So uh, our boats have been built like this for about 20 years. Um, double stepped hull, mm -hmm. fully infused, uh, and, and really designed to perform. Yeah. Um, fully cored. Uh, our boats are really just performance And boats. do you use any kind of exotic materials like carbon fiber in here? Yeah, we or? do use carbon. So we'll use carbon in certain areas to eliminate weight, eliminate weight, and then we'll also, we have an option for a full carbon fiber boat if you want it. Okay. I mean, are any of your boats designed to look non-ostentatious? I don't mean ostentatious, I mean over the top. I mean, you buy a boat like this because it goes fast, it looks fantastic. Do you, does anyone ever come to you and say, I just want a standard boat, I want to, I've got a sea rake. Yeah, we, and, and we do, right? We'll, we'll do anything you want. So you want an all white boat, we'll do an all white boat. Is it, it rare it, these days though? Or do it people is come, rare, yeah, People come know. to you for a bit of flair. Yeah, they come, they come here because of the flair. Now, am I right in thinking that I've been out on the water and seen the Coast Guard with your boats, right? Coast Guard, Homeland Security, the Navy, and then many foreign governments. Why do they choose your boats over someone like a Brunswick? products yeah something. so it, it's the ride right so uh, they come they come to us for the ride what makes your ride is it smoother less a, is it less wet boats is that it, it's it's smoother and in rough water it can still go the, the speed that they need to go to accomplish their mission that's fantastic so you your boats can be used in rough water and anything I mean absolutely the and, rougher the better and I see fishing rod holders on some of these boats do people actually fish some on these people things? fish on them yeah we, we can build a bit of a hybrid so that you can fish the boat and still have your 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 luxury appointments. Now, do you use a lot of your boats are used as tenders, or do people just buy them as standalone vessels? Uh, both. We have plenty of boats that are tenders to mega yachts, and plenty of boats that stand alone on their own. Craziest request you've ever had that someone put in a boat? I had a stripper pole question yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do people ask for that? Like, can you? They do, but through? then they never go through with it because I think it's a bit of an awkward conversation if they're with a, a, a girl. It's like, oh, what's that? Well, I don't know. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yeah, you know, the crazy, the crazy things just become in the minute details of what people want. So, yeah. uh, you know, I want this, but I want it a little less and three inches higher. And so, but then they do that across the whole boat. So it, it becomes very, very detailed for a specific person. How much um, customization can you do? Obviously, you have molds for these boats. We do. So we won't, we won't change the hull or the deck, but uh, anything from seating to colors to placement, those are things we'll change. That's fantastic. Now, you've been talking for many years about this new mold you got with a 70 footer. Are we any closer on that? So the 60, we have a Sorry. 70 foot mold. We do have a 70 foot mold not being built, sitting in our yard. We have a 60 foot boat. We are close. Okay. The, the finish line is in view. We're about three months away. To finishing it? To finishing it. Is that an inboard boat or an outboard the boat? The first one will be outboards, but it'll be able to uh, be optioned out with inboard diesels if you want. With and that'll be drives. like an Arneson surface Correct. drive, yeah? 
And we're going to see that maybe at Fort Lauderdale? Fort Lauderdale will 100% be at Fort Lauderdale. This is why you've got no hair now, because you're pulling right. it out, I pulled isn't it? it all out. I pulled it all out. <laughs> most expensive boat you ever made? I'm assuming it's this gold one, right? No, no. Uh, most expensive boat I've made is about $1.3 million. For an outboard, that's not bad going. Right. And, is that... uh, and the 60 will, will outdo that very quickly. Do you ever get any Middle Eastern clients? Yes, we do. Do they ever request exotic gems in their boat? No, not from us at least. No. No, no exotic gems. Because I was uh, talking to one of our sponsor fishing boats. He's a helicopter repair guy. Okay. And they have a Middle Eastern helicopter and people had to come in when they landed it to repair it, to take out all the interior because it had diamonds uh, all in it. Yeah, we've never So I'm wondering that. if they ever do it on never. boats like this. Not, 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 not for many of my customers. Where do you see the industry going? Are people still wanting speed or is it now functionality that's really taking over and, and, and fuel economy? Yeah, so I think it's a combination of all of that together, right? I think people still want that speed, but also want the comfort and the functionality. So we're seeing the bigger outboards, the bigger horsepower, but then they still want your creature comfort. So maybe go 100, but also have an open boat that you can use. Absolutely. And are these sevens? These are not. These are the Mercs. The sevens are the ones behind us in the blue and silver. Now, how do they run? They okay. run amazing. They're just a spectacular motor. Does it make as mo more noise on idle yeah, than yeah, others? Yeah, sure. They're a little louder at idle, but not much. But you feel the power under your hand when yeah, you hammer you, it down. Yeah, you feel the power. And you hear the power, too. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. When, when I saw those, I knew you guys were going to be of the first course, to put them on. Always. How many of those can you have you got on a boat? We can do four. Could you do five? Uh, on the 60, we can do five. But now you're talking a stupid amount of power, right? Yeah, but but usable power. And, and so that's it is the usable. Right? It's usable power. Right. So I've heard a lot of people talk about when you put four outboards on, the fourth one's kind of a waste. Especially when you put five on, now you're getting an extra mile an hour? No, before. more than that. So okay. we'll see the difference between four and five outboards being about five to seven miles an hour. Okay. Well, it's not insignificant if you're trying to break that 100 mile, right? Right, right. It's not insignificant. And, you know, the guys want to do that eight. You know, they want to be going 80 plus. They just want it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved in boating. You've been around boats your entire... Are you Florida born? No, no. I'm born in Baltimore. Grew up on the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we've always been boating. We've had everything from sun seekers, sea rays, cabos, vikings, we've had it all. Yeah. Uh, and then when we graduated, my brother, and I, when my brother and I graduated college, we thought it'd be cool to own a boat company. So right. here we are, 12 <laughs> years later, owning a boat <laughs> company. Fantastic. And do you guys own Midnights now and run them all yeah, the time? Yeah, we, we own a bunch of Midnights and we run them. We're out all the time and always running. This is a good guy to be friends with. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.